I want you to picture the scene. You've just finished adding observability to your serverless applications. You've added auto instrumentation and you're getting lots and lots of incredible insights already, but you're still struggling. The support team is still coming to you with very specific requests. Why is the product information not being generated for this product? Or maybe the inventory workflow never started for this specific product. You're finding it frustrating. Although you've got this incredibly high level insight and actionable data, you still need to be able to zoom into specific request flows and answer questions that are specific to your business. Hi, I'm James Easton, a serverless developer advocate here at Datadog. And in this video, I'm going to show you why specific business context is so important when you're adding observability to your systems. And importantly, how you can add specific business context to the telemetry you send to Datadog. So why is context so important? Well, just imagine for a moment, you're working on a system that's got a reasonably large amount of throughput. You're going to have lots and lots of requests coming into your separate Lambda functions. Now, seeing this inside one specific view inside the serverless interface inside the data console is incredibly useful, but this is a macro view. You can see high level cold starts, you can see errors, you can see invocations timing out. You can even look at specific functions that are having errors and dive straight down into the specific invokes that actually have an error. Now, this is of course incredibly useful, but this is only one way you might debug your system. Here, you're reacting to a specific event that has happened. Namely, an error has occurred or the functions increased cold starts or there's invocations timing out. You're reacting to something that has happened in your system. There's another type of problem you might face though. I'm sure you've all been there in your career where there's a problem somewhere in your system, but all of your alerts and monitors are showing okay. You can't immediately see anything unusual in the system, but your users are reporting errors. Insights, metrics, and macro level information is fantastic for known problems. Latency, function errors, numbers of invokes, these are all known challenges. But distributed systems fail in new and novel ways all the time, which means a lot of the time you're dealing with unknown unknowns. Your system failing in new and novel ways that you haven't even expected before. Think back to the issue we looked at in the last video. You had an increased error count in your pricing function. When you go off and fix that problem, it's highly unlikely that that exact same problem is going to happen again. Because you've put a fix in place, the next time it fails, it's almost guaranteed to be something new and novel. For that reason, you need to add as much context to your telemetry as possible to allow you to have the high level information on how your system is performing as a whole, but also combining that with the ability to zoom in and ask specific questions of your system. For that, you need business context. And that starts in the application code. Take this specific example of a Lambda function that's handling the create product calls on your API. Now this function broadly follows what will be called a ports and adapters architecture style. Something I would recommend you almost always do when you're working with Lambda, or in fact, any compute provider. The ports and adapters style of structuring your code base separates your infrastructure code from your actual application code and business logic. In this case, the infrastructure code is Lambda itself. Notice your actual Lambda handler is only actually handling the Lambda event payload, and then it's making a call into this create product command handler. This create product command handler is something from your custom business logic. I'm gonna talk in a little bit more detail in a later video in this series about best practices for structuring your actual Lambda application code. But just know this separation exists for now. So you've got this handler that's actually handling the Lambda event, and then that's making a call into this create product handler class. And this is your actual business logic for creating a product. And you'll notice the very first thing this create product handler is doing is getting the currently active span. One of the things the Datadog extension will do when it wraps your function code inside the Datadog handler is it will actually start a new trace, start a new span. So here you're retrieving the currently active span using the Datadog tracer. And then to that currently active span, you're calling this add tags function. This is where you're adding the name of the product and the price of the product as tags to the span. Remember, you're adding business context to 
to your telemetry. Now, if you aren't using tracing yet, maybe you're only emitting logs right now. You can also do a very similar thing here. And no matter how you are outputting your logs, you use some kind of structured logging pattern. All of your logs should broadly speaking have the same structure that allows you to add context to your logs. Now, this specific example here is using Lambda Power Tools. If you aren't familiar with Lambda Power Tools, this is an open source project started at AWS to improve the developer experience of building with Lambda. Initially, it just started out with support for tracing, logging, and metrics, but it has since expanded into a whole range of different areas. Things to implement item potency, to process batches of messages, to handle retrieving parameters. And if you're using Lambda with one of them languages, I would really recommend picking up and using Lambda Power Tools. Now, Lambda Power Tools logging gives you structured logging out of the box. And the structured logs that get generated will automatically have some contextual information about your Lambda function added to them. Notice the example here, information has been added about the function ARN, the amount of memory assigned, the level of the log, the message, the service, all this stuff gets automatically added. If you are using logs inside your application, ensure they are structured logs. So as well as having all this default structured information added to your logs, when you actually use the Power Tools logger in your application code, you can pass in this additional object. This will allow you to add additional properties to the log lines that get generated. So as well as tagging your spans, you're also adding the product name and product price to your logs as well. And as you scroll through the rest of this create product handler, after the product actually gets created successfully, notice that another log message is written, including the product ID and the product ID is also added to that same span that was started here. You're adding lots and lots of context that you're generating. Now, this is all well and good, but how does this actually help you as a developer? Well, to see this in action, let's actually go off and create a new product. I'm gonna create a new product here called Traced Widget, and that's going to have a price of 15. I'm gonna go off and create that product and that product now exists. But remember, there might also be lots and lots of other requests happening in the system. You'll notice when I created that product, after the page refreshed, there's actually all these other products that have also been created, our traced widget appearing down at the bottom there. The challenge now would be, how would you diagnose a problem with that specific product that has been created? Because if you were to go off to the Datadog UI now and actually go and have a look at the traces that are being generated, you probably see an awful lot of information going on here. In the last 15 minutes, there have been 178,000 requests across all of my Lambda functions. There's been a thousand errors. There's a lot of stuff going on in this system, but I'm looking for a specific product. I'm looking for a specific request that I need to diagnose the issue for. And that's where distributed tracing should be a fundamental part of your observability strategy. Distributed tracing coupled with specific business context. So from the Datadog homepage, I then navigated to the APM menu on the left-hand side and into the traces view. This will give me a live list of all the traces currently happening in the system. You could see that live updating when I was talking then. And this is a lot, right? All you want to do is find that specific request. And this is where that context becomes incredibly valuable. You can use the search bar at the top to search for specific traces. So I'm going to search for the product.name. If you remember in the application code, that was the name of the tag that you added. And I'm going to search for a traced widget. When I search for that, you will see I've got a result back. I've got a single result for the single span that has a product name of traced widget, which will be what you would expect to see. If you open up that trace now, you can see the complete end to end trace for that traced widget product. You can see all the downstream things that happened after that product was created. You can jump in, you can jump out, and you can look at exactly what happened for that specific product. Of course, that's all well and good if you're using traces, but what if you're using logging? From the trace view now, let's go over to our serverless view and look across all our serverless functions. And maybe you do know it's creating a product that's causing you a problem. So you could open the create product lambda function, but remember, there's still an awful lot of stuff going on here. Thankfully, that same search ability you have for your traces also works for logs as well. From within the view of a specific Lambda function, if you hit open in Log Explorer, that will drop you into the Datadog Log Explorer, and it will automatically be filtered to logs for that specific Lambda function. 
So I still want to look at the logs for this Lambda function, but you're going to add that exact same query. I want to search for a product.name and I want to search for a traced widget. And you can see I've got one log line for this Lambda function that has the field product.name set to traced widget. If I open up that log line, I can see that additional contextual information that was added to my logs. Remember, some of this has come from Lambda Power Tools automatically. Some of this has come from you manually adding that additional information in your application code. And that's what's giving you this ability to search for our specific requests. Now, of course, finding this log line with traced widget as the name only gives you this one specific log line. From within this same screen, you can then also filter by the request ID. So if you add that filter to request ID as well, and then delete all of the other filters, you can see all the logs for that specific request ID. So I can now see in my logs that request to create the product was handled, and then the product created log line was written. As far as your log lines are concerned, this product was created successfully. And you can use these things really nicely together from inside the trace view, you can actually jump across and see the log lines related to that specific trace. And equally inside your log view, you've also got a tab for viewing any related traces to that specific log line. Auto instrumentation is of course really valuable and it's the Datadog Lambda extension that automatically links all of this together for you. The Datadog Lambda extension is both retrieving your trace data and collecting your Lambda logs. And because both types of telemetry are running through the same extension, the two can be automatically correlated before being sent to the Datadog backend. But remember, context is king. Whilst auto instrumentation is incredibly useful, it's adding business context that will allow you to play detective in your system, to diagnose issue faster and have the ability to both zoom into specific requests and then zoom out again to see your system as a whole. As always, all the code samples you've seen are available in GitHub using the link in the description below. In that repo, you'll also find examples in many different runtimes and infrastructure as code tools. Now, in these first two videos, we We've covered auto instrumentation and adding business context using Node.js and the CDK. But you might be wondering, how does all of this work if I'm not a CDK user? In the next video in this series, you're going to learn about other infrastructure as code tools. Are you a Terraform user? I've got you covered. Prefer AWS SAM to the CDK? Don't worry, there's an example for that as well. And we'll cover all of that and more in the next video. I'll see you there.